Plan. Thank you everyone for your time today. The uh, reference solutions, formerly as Julian mentioned, known as Reference USA, is available through the library and you can access all of our modules that are available here. There are 10 of them. So let's, let me do this. You know, it, I have been with the company since 08 and I actually, the company that I used to work for actually used uh, Dead Axel to, we would send them lists of our customers that we'd lost contact with. So in most cases, those people had moved and we didn't have that new move information. So we would send over that information and then they would return that to us so that we could try and reestablish contact with those customers. So I've worked for Data Axel now since 08, but I've also been a customer of theirs, gosh, probably starting in 1998 or nine. So uh, certainly know of the company from, from the perspective of a, as being a customer of theirs and, and, and as well working for them. So some great information here. It's really uh, pretty darn simple to use. There, there are a few tricks that I'll show you how you could uh, do some produce records and produce the kinds of searches that you would like to do. First of all, I would mention, and if you would like to point this out to anybody else, maybe colleagues or friends that you have, we do offer webinars on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you could point anyone to those. And we also have under the Learning Center, some great materials that you could access if it would be helpful for you to have information uh, written, you could go under the training material here and we have these database overview documents. You know, there's one for all business databases. So that would be our, our Canadian, our US, our historical, et cetera, all consumer databases, all databases. And then it's broken down by each of them. So if you wanted to only look at the US business database, that was gonna be your focus. You could get that one as well. You can either just pull this up or you can print it off. It depends on what you want to be able to do. Know that that's always available. And the, the other thing that I like to point out is the fact that we have our contact us information here. We list an 800 number along with an email address. Feel free to certainly reach out to us if you have questions or need some clarification or, or some kind of assistance. We'd be happy to assist you with that. I can always get back to my home page. And I want to point out with the uh, with the access through the library, you can also download our app if you would like to use that. There's no charge on the app. When you go to launch that, you'll put in your zip code and then it will ask you to uh, click on the library that's yours. You would do so, put in your library card number, and you would have access to the U.S. business database through that app, as well as the U.S. consumer lifestyles information. So know that those are the two modules currently available in the app. And then lastly, we do give you the ability to create your own personalized account. It's not a shortcut to get to the database. You would still log in through the library's website to get to us. Once you've registered, you can log in and you can save your searches. So if you produced a thousand results and wanted to come back to those results at a later date and time, you could certainly do so. And we would present you with the most up-to-date information that we have based on the filters that you use to create that search. So if you were in the business database and you pulled up, you know, some restaurants in an area or hotels or whatever, dry cleaners, manufacturers, construction companies, whatever type of business, we would present you with the latest and greatest because we don't save the actual records themselves. We save the steps that you took to build the search. And with this information, I do like to point out there are different update schedules for each of these. So here in Omaha, we have about 350 folks. Their job is to call these businesses 
annually and verify, you know, of course, business name, address. We try and capture who that owner or manager is of that business, how many employees they have, what's their primary line of business. You know, obviously it's easy when you look at a restaurant, that's their primary line of business, but some manufacturers, they may have two, three, four, five different uh, lines of business. Think about Walmart and all the different lines of business that they have under that one roof. You know, everything from groceries, electronics, uh, automotive, garden, et cetera. So we try and capture all of that information and we're doing that once a year and then we're pushing that information out. We're updating that information every Thursday into Friday morning. So four times a month, that's going through that update process. That's why I say, if in fact you had a thousand records in a search, you may find that you have a thousand and three now. Or, and this all depends on when you've come back into it, or it may have gone the other way. Maybe some we've learned about have closed or we've removed some from verified status because we can't get a hold of them. Then uh, that number might decrease as well. So once a week on that update, once a year on the historical Technically, we take a look at that at the end of every month, but, but uh, you will see where that full historical information is available about the second week in January. So, and this dates back to 1997. That's how old that historical information is. That's when, when the company got the idea, hey, we should hang on to this historical information. It might be of value. And by gosh, it, it certainly has become very valuable. So once a year, our Canadian business information, not nearly as robust as what we have with the US. This information is updated once a month. Our jobs and internships, this is our relationship with Indeed.com. This is being updated nightly. So Indeed sends us a feed and then we match those jobs or those internships with the appropriate record of the business that's doing the hiring. So this is once a, a day. New businesses every week. So we're getting this through the Secretary of State's office and we're updating that information once a week. We keep it in here, archived in here for up to a, a full year. But we will, once we're able to verify that new business, we will give them a complete business record and post it here as well. So you could see some duplication there because the uh, we want to be able to leave that in there from a historical standpoint for a year to look at those new types of filings. So that's weekly. Our U.S. healthcare standard white pages, consumer lifestyles, and the Canadian white pages, those are all updated monthly. And then our new movers, new homeowners. So we're fully licensed to brush our data database up against the national change of address. And that's where we're capturing this information. And we're updating that weekly. Again, just like with the biz new businesses, we're keeping them in here for a year. And then they filter into either the consumer lifestyles and or the uh, standard white pages. So I'll show you how to use several of these modules. And the beautiful thing about them is they all search the same way. They're, I'll, I'll try and plant some seeds on how you might want to use them. Uh, and then and perhaps uh, you'll even learn some, uh, some ways that are really unique to your business that you would want to use some of this information. I can tell you, I have a nephew in Denver and he uses the US healthcare all the time. Uh, he actually sells a transcription service to hospital, or excuse me, to, to doctor's offices. And so they contact these different healthcare professionals and try and market their business through them. So lots of different ways that you might be interested in using some of this data. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the US business database. And no matter which module I launch, I'll always come to this quick search page first. So that's going to be listed there. Uh, I would be able to do a company name search. Maybe, maybe there's a company that I work with. It's a really good customer. I'm not maybe certain of what their primary 
uh, industry code might be, I could look up that company by name in whatever city and state they're in, and then be able to go about uh, pulling up that record, identifying that code, and then using that code to do an expanded search in whatever geography I'm interested in. And then I can certainly uh, grab that information and use that to my to my betterment. So know that that's available. You could also, maybe there was an executive that someone worked with at a company and they learned that that executive has moved on. They would like to try and reestablish contact. You could do an executive first name, last name search. Hopefully you know the city and state that they're in. And then you could try and find that executive. You could look at all businesses in any, in any given city or state, just depends on what you wanna be able to do and even do a reverse phone number uh, lookup. Just depends on what you would like to do. I'm gonna go to advanced search because this is where most people spend their time. And by the way, additional filters goes to the same place, advanced search. So I'll go ahead and launch that. And with advanced search, it allows me to get so much more granular by using some of these various selection fil filters that I have here. So let me explain a few of these. Like for example, company name. When we run quick search, you saw where you could do one company name. In this option, you can select it and you could put in multiple companies one at a time. So if, if IBM were one of them that you wanted to see, you could add that to your list. If Starbucks were one of them that you wanted to add to your list, you could add that and then simply select whatever geography is important for you to get those two results. Or maybe you want to add a, a six of them. You just do them one at a time. Otherwise, we will always give you the name of the company. You don't even need to select this. We'll just always give that information to you. Same with this executive information. We'll always give you this as well. But maybe, maybe you need, with your business, maybe you need to speak to other businesses that have an owner present. If that were the case, you could drive in just that particular type of designation for the executive title and forego all the other ones, like managers, et cetera. So just depends on what your needs are. Otherwise, we will always give you that executive title. We'll always give you that gender, the ethnicity. We'll always give you that information where we have that. Keyword search is generally where most people go to find the types of records that they want. And it's as simple as typing in whatever industry you're interested in and then searching for that It'll give you results. You click on the results and you can do more than one uh, that, that you're interested in. It'll add that to the selected field and you'll be able to see your results. I'll show you this in a moment. I do like to point out that we have the major industry group as an option by, by filtering as well for types of businesses. So this is just in relationship to the standard industrial classification, or as it notes here, SIC code. So that's that coding system was technically retired by Uncle Sam, but we've kept it alive because we've made it much more granular than what Uncle Sam had ever done with it. The SIC codes were technically replaced by the NAICS codes. So we have both of those on the records. I wanna show you how you could use this. For example, if you were interested in exploring these construction companies, you can click on that plus symbol and it will give you a definition for each of these codes. So if you were looking for just general contractors, maybe you had a product you wanted to be able to sell to them, you can get to just that specific audience. But notice if you click the plus symbol, it starts to give you another breakdown. So when Uncle Sam was managing these SIC codes, they were only four digits in length. So this is all you had. These were the five designations that you had based on general contractors. Although we took it a step further and we built off of this code and we added two additional so that you could get that much more granular. If you wanted to get to just businesses that their primary line of business is building carports, for example, you could get to that. 
just depends on what you might need. So it's kind of a stair-stepped process to get to the exact type of data that you need to be able to ultimately see. So no, you can use either of those by which to produce those types of businesses. We give you a variety of geography selects. I'll, I'll show you how this would work. Certainly this phone information is pertinent and we'll always give that to you, but maybe you wanna see businesses that just have toll-free numbers or that have a toll-free number. You could make that one of your drivers. Business size. Now I mentioned that when we're making those verification phone calls, we, we ask this question, how many employees do you have? Then we make that that number that they give us available in each and every record. So you could use that as a filter. Maybe you only want to see businesses that employ a certain uh, number of employees, like five to nine. If that were the case, you could push in those types of businesses based on that size uh, requirement with employees. Conversely though, with sales volumes, we learned a long time ago, you don't ask a business how much they're making and not have that phone call end uh, abruptly. So we have a team here in Omaha that put together an algorithm that supports this sales volume number. And they use factors that we get in that phone call, like number of employees. And by the way, 72% of the businesses will give us an exact number. Those that don't, we actually apply a range based on their peers size. So you'll see either an exact number, five, 26, whatever that number might be, or you'll see a range like that five to nine. With sales volume, this is always a modeled number and we're using information like number of employees, where they're physically in business at, because there are gonna be different expenses depending on where your business is located in the United States, how long they've been in business, uh, the, the type uh, of business that they're in. So do they have one primary line of business or do they maybe do multiple things? So we capture all of that. And then we get some information through the Bureau of Labor and Statistics to then produce this sales number. Now, if it's a publicly traded company, of course, that sales number will come from their 10K report. So we'll capture that and make that live. Also, besides just the modeling of the sales number, this information for business expenditures is also modeled information by that same team of folks. So know that when you see those business expenditures, that's also modeled information. So we'll always give you this ownership information if you wanted to maybe only look at home-based businesses, you could do that, or you could exclude them from your search. Maybe you were going to do a general search in, a, in an area, in a, in a neighborhood, as it mentions down here, and maybe you didn't want uh, home-based businesses to show up in your end results. You could certainly omit them if you wanted to as well. If you choose nothing, they'll always be included. We'll always give you this financial information where that's available and special selections. We have a, a variety of ways here that you could filter information. Maybe you want to see those newer businesses in your community. You could say years in the database, and maybe I want to see uh, the last two years worth of those new businesses that have opened up in my community. I could drive in those results, and I can use any other filters I would like as well. So know that you can use a lot of these filters to get to the specific types of data. And as it relates to professionals, all or one, we know that a lot of people will use the data to make mailing labels, for example. And we added this filter because we were told by our libraries that not in every case did someone want to be able to reach every doctor in an office or every attorney in an office or every CPA. They only wanted to reach one primary. You could select one instead of all and then have a shorter list of records that you would ultimately be perhaps doing a mailing to. So no, you could control that expense as it's related to that uh, campaign that you might be doing with snail mail. We also give you the ability to exclude information. So 
uh, some information that people might want to exclude. We do have kiosks in our database. So if, if for example, you didn't want ATMs to show up in your search, you could look for ATMs, search for that, then it will produce that SIC code and that description for ATMs. It's a little slow today. There it comes. So there's that SIC code, but I can just click on this name. It adds it to the selected field. And then when I produce whatever other records I want, these ATMs will automatically be excluded from showing or populating in my records. Let's do this. We're just gonna do a simple search. I want to show you a couple of tools here. Uh, actually, we'll do it from the county standpoint. Jillian, what, what county are you in there? We are in Philadelphia County. Oh, it is Philadelphia County as well. Okay. So you can just see that you can start keying that in system will try and assume what it is that you're looking for. You can click on that. And now I'm going to look at all verified records. We do have unverified. Those are the ones that, and we will try for two years to keep a business verified. If after that time, we can't get any information about them. We haven't found any additional information that they've maybe closed or gone out of business, we will move them from that verified status into the unverified. If I'm using this as a sales prospecting tool, I might want to look at these unverifieds uh, in some respect, because you might find that there are, in fact, some opportunities that could be alive in there, even though we haven't been able to get them. You know your community better. You might find some that are there. But in this case, I'm going to look at all verified businesses across the, the county. Let's do this. I'll view my results. So I have a total of 65,000 across the county. The tool I want to show you is the charts tool. So I'm going to select charts. And what it will do is it'll break it down first by SIC codes, but I could default that to NAICS codes if I, if I wanted to. And it gives me the top seven businesses. So out of that, out of that 58 or 65,000, 22 and a half, uh, 22.5 thousand of those are in fact the businesses that make up these top seven. First place are physicians and surgeons. And that's because they're all 1099 guys and gals. So that's why there are so many of them. And this is often the case. It'd be the same case if we were looking at my community here in Omaha. Uh, physicians and surgeons generally always end up in number in that first position, followed in this case by restaurants, then attorneys, nurse practitioners. There's those automated teller machines. So if you didn't want those records to show up, you know that you could have excluded, or that could be something that can be excluded then followed by churches and dentists. We also give you a full report and it's 128 pages in length of all of the primary SIC codes, all of their descriptions, and then the number of records that apply to each of those. So if I were looking at this automotive repairing and service, if I wanted to get to just this group of records, I could click on that and immediately get to that uh, 677. So it just depends on what you need to be able to do. Know that you can navigate even from that charts perspective to be able to get to that kind of data. I do like to show it from the employment size perspective as well. So I can switch this up. What it will do is it'll break down those by business size ranges. So one to four is the largest at a little over 63%, followed by five to nine, 10 to 19, you get the idea. All of this information can be printed or can be made part of a PowerPoint presentation. I also give you some of those larger employers in the area and a complete listing in the report by range. 
change. So know that that is something that's available for you as well. And I got that all that information by simply doing a simple search. And I just pulled up in this case, the uh, entire county and then uh, went from there. So know that that's available to you as well. Let's do this real quick. I'm gonna revise my search slightly. And instead of uh, just looking at all businesses, I'm gonna select the keyword search we're just going to do a simple search here. We're going to look for restaurants. I'm, I'm interested in, in being able to see certain numbers. So I'll go with restaurants because generally there are so many of them. And I'm going to search for that designation. I need to tell the system this is what I want. I can click on that and add that to my selected box. I do want to point out to you, though, as I mentioned, we added the last two numbers to this, to this SIC code. We've taken it even a step further in some cases where if you wanted to get to Japanese or Italian or soul food restaurants, you could do so and notice how we've added the number and then an alpha. And in some cases, it's another number. So you can see how granular you can get. And if I continue to scroll down, you can see that you can even get to specific types of chains. So if that were of interest to you, no, no you can do that. And this has now become a nine digit number. So uh, we've tried to make it as user friendly for folks, depending on what their needs might be. I'll leave it at just restaurants and I'm searching all SIC codes. So watch what happens if I switch this up to primary only. Uh, did I produce? I'm going to go back. I didn't produce that. I want to show you what the count is. So the count is 4,259 records if I'm searching all SIC codes. If I switch this up to primary, notice that drops down to 34. So it got rid of businesses like bowling alleys that happen to have a restaurant in them. Their primary line of business isn't a restaurant, it's entertainment or amusement or, or bowling. I don't know if there's an SIC code for bowling or not. Uh, so it got rid of those kinds of records, maybe movie theaters that offer a dining experience. Uh, it, it, it's subtracted all of those results from our end results. And then I can see, or I can add other filters, maybe, I want to look at certain sizes. So I could do that by number of employees or sales volume. Just depends on what I want. I will show you before I change that, I want to show you this. We're going to go into this group and I'm going to chart this again. We know we're only looking at one industry. So no longer will it give me the top seven industries. What it will do is it'll give me the top uh, uh, city there in the area. So I've got that listed. And of course, I can get to all of those records if I wanted to. But notice what happens if I change this up to employment size. So of all these restaurants, 70, almost 73% of them are what would truly be considered small businesses followed by 20 to 49, then the five to 19, and the 10 to, excuse me, the five to nine, the 10 to 19, et cetera. So you can get that kind of breakdown and get that kind of insight. I had a, I did a program like this in Orlando and a lady that was at that particular program, this was the audience that she needed. She had a product that she was selling for a company across the state of Florida and she's starting in Orange County in the Orlando area and this was the the group that she needed to see she couldn't sell to some of those larger chains so she opted out of this and she chose the five to nine as well so she ended up combining these two uh, ranges in order to come up with a complete listing of all those businesses she could sell to she was actually going to show this uh, chart to her boss so he knew what she was uh, focused on. And then, of course, scrolling down, it gives you some of those larger employers in the area. And then, of course, all those records. 
So know you can get this, you can print it off, you can make it part of a PowerPoint presentation if you were perhaps going to be needing something like that. We also give you another tool and that's our, our heat map. So what it will do is it will look across the area and give you the density of all of those restaurants in the area. So not surprising that in Philly proper, you're gonna see a lot of those restaurants in red here and then where it expands out less uh, with the yellow, even less with the green and of course uh, no restaurants uh, no color there. It does give you this report then as well by the zip codes, and it will give you how many records are in each of those zip codes. So if I just wanted to get to this one universe, I could get to that 178. So know all of that is available. You can also manipulate this map. As it notes here, if you change the zoom of this of this map to where it's 300 or fewer records, this is what will happen. I'll get I'll drill in and get a little closer, and I'll I'll kind of pull this down so I'm seeing more of these restaurants in the northern part of Philadelphia. And I'm going to click one more time, and I bet you yeah. So it begins to pinpoint all of that information. It, gives me this legend on the left-hand side. If there's a plus symbol, that means that there's more than one location under there. In this case, there's a couple. So I can get to that information. I could even use, maybe I wanna find out where, where this particular steakhouse is at. I can click on that name and it will take me to that record. So it just depends on what you need to be able to do. Again, we give you that top 50 uh, results based on that zip codes. So know that all of that is available to you and it can be used with any industry. I'm just using restaurants because I've, I get enough numbers, right? Uh, but it can be with dry cleaners. It could be with a certain type of manufacturer. Just depends on what's of importance to you. I can always get back to my list and I am going to I am going to cheat here a little bit in advance. I'll bet you you all have some of these. I'm almost there. There it is. You do have. You have Arby's. I'm going to show you this Arby's information. And I want to point out this information on this far right-hand column. So it's the corporate tree structure. If I wanted to know, for example, these executive titles, I could change this up from corporate tree, which it, it always defaults to, but maybe I want to look at these titles. I could certainly do that. I want to show you that corporate structure, though, because there might be some, some valuable information that you could learn about a company when you see this corporate information. It's one thing to learn about one company. It's a whole nother story when you can learn about its entire structure. The blue up arrow will take me to just one record, and that would be either the subsidiary that's responsible for all of the Arby's, and if there weren't one, which there is, uh, but if there weren't one, it would take me to the ultimate parent. This will show me their entire organizational chart. So I can select that. And Arby's, which is managed by Inspire Brands here, is actually owned by this private equity firm out of Atlanta, Georgia. So it gives you all of this company's information, all their subsidiaries, all the branches. There is a legend that runs across the top here. So if you needed to know what this PV stood for, quickly you can identify that that's a private company. You can get to these other subsidiaries if you wanted to. You could open this work capital group record if you wanted. You could certainly get to that. You could get to the Inspire brands. You could also close this and then see all of the other subsidiaries that are under their umbrella. So if I have a product that I wanna to sell to an Arby's location, why not find out about all of these other branches? I might be able to make a much larger sale 
heck, I might even learn about some other companies that are just like the company I intend on selling to. You know, who wouldn't want to know about these, these uh, Hardys? So I can click on that and get that additional information as well about all those Hardys branches. So it just depends on what you need this information for. Know that there's a wealth of data all from that uh, information with corporate restructure. So you can get to any or all of that. All of that could be downloaded if you wanted to. I can always get back to my uh, records out here. Let's open up the Arby's record. This is a perfect example of what all records would look like. It's gonna always give you this location information first, followed by some information with the social links and the website that they have listed there job listings. I mentioned that Indeed sends us a feed every night. Uh, and then we match that feed with that company that's doing the, the hiring. So we have that information. We also have that corporate tree inside the record. So know that that is accessible there as well. Then we'll have the industry profile. So there's that SIC code that brings in all restaurants uh, from a primary standpoint. If this were that really good company that I had worked with and I wasn't certain what their primary code was, I could write this code down and instead of typing in where I typed in restaurants, I could just type that code in there. And by the way, skip the dash, just do the six numbers. And then I could hit search and it would come up with the definition. I could select it and then just get those kinds of businesses. So know that that's available. Business profile, we'll have that on, on certainly these larger kinds of businesses. We won't have a business profile on every single business. We also have Google Maps embedded in here. So that information is there. You can print that off. You can manipulate this. You could get that satellite view. The street view just depends on what you want. So that's available to you. And this is a perfect example. So we updated this record in September of this year. And when we called, they told us they had 30 employees. Otherwise we would see a range there, right? A range means they did not respond to our question about number of employees. So these folks did. That number is one of those pieces of data that we use to then produce the algorithm that produces this sales number. We have their parent information there. Again, I could get to just that one record if I needed to. This particular record has been in our database for 15 years. Some hours of operation there, that management directory. Company news. We're getting this on the fly from uh, Bing. So it was last updated on the 15th at 11.02 a.m. Heck, who knows? There might be a couple more updates that, that Bing sends us today. But in this case, that was the last update and if you scroll down, you'll see that there's actually access to more articles. So you could perhaps learn some very valuable information about this, this company uh, all by reading through some of those articles. I know that I just noticed this deal that they've, that Inspire Brands is going to be now managing Dunkin' Donuts. So I'm envisioning a new product being sold to consumers in the very near future. Uh, it'll be a curly donut. I uh, think that's possible. Anything I think is possible. So know that that's there. No stock data in this case because it's not publicly traded. If there, if there were, we would have their ticker symbol there, et cetera. And then I've got business expenditures. Again, that's that modeled information. I have a little bit of historical data, including some historical records. So you can open those up one at a time if you wanted to, or you can use this slide and get to those earlier records. Just depends on what you wanna be able to do. You can always get back. And we also give you any kind of UCC filings. In this case, the business hadn't taken out any loans that they put up collateral against, but those would be listed here if in fact they had. 
Then there would be the nearby businesses. And I always encourage folks, if you're using, if you're looking at this record, because this is a record of somebody that you intend on perhaps reaching out to, to sell something or do some business with, you might want to take a look at these nearby businesses to see if there could be any of those that you would want to also, while you're in the area, reach out to. And then of course, last but not least, would be a listing of competitors. So we have that information for you in it. And if you wanted to, you could go into this Applebee's or any of these other listings just by clicking on that name and it will advance. So there's my Applebee's information. So no, you can get, you can, you can manipulate the data and get around to lots of different information rather readily. I can always get back to the top. If when you come into a record, maybe you wanna go right to the management directory, use these quick links and just get right down there to that man management directory information. Just depends on what you're accessing or needing in that search. I'm gonna go back to my records. Any questions that anyone might have regarding the access that I had to, to getting to this Arby's information? Okay, if you do have a question, certainly feel free to, to uh, send through a chat and they'll let me know about that and I'll answer your question. So I'm going to, let's do this. I do wanna point out down here at the very bottom in red lettering, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, thank goodness I have my spectacles on. So you can download 250 records or print them uh, at a time, but there's no limit to how many times you might do that. So since there are 3,438 records here, let's say that I wanted to download a thousand of these. What you can do is select this box next to company name. It'll grab all those records, then you advance to the next page, repeat that step, and you would do that 10 times for 250 because there are 25 records per page. So once you've reached that, that far, you can then, I'll go to one more page. I've got 150, I've got 150. We'll pretend it's, it's 250. At that point, you just select the download. And I would suggest that if you intend on taking a lot of records out, like I mentioned a thousand maybe here, I would open up your own version of Excel and then minimize it. You can then go to my download. If you're going to make mailing labels, you definitely want to leave it in comma delimited. And if you just need the name of the business, the address, phone number, we do give you some additional elements like the owner or manager's name and their title, uh, the line or lines of business that they offer, the number of employees, that sales volume. So we give you all of that information and you could just select download records. My document here is static. That's why I suggested that you open up your own version of Excel and you simply come up here to the upper left-hand corner in between cell one and A and click there and then just copy and paste that information into your own version of Excel. After you're all done, then you can adjust these cells so that you can read them all. But I would suggest that if you wanna take a lot of records and don't wanna save a bunch of independent downloads of 250 each, it would be best to add them to your own version of Excel and make just one document. Then you would minimize yours, come up here, close mine. It leaves you right back here. All you have to do is select the word back. It takes you back to the page that you left off on. And then, it, then you have to clear out these, these check marks. Easiest way to do that instead of doing it page by page is revise search. It doesn't forget how you built your search. Then you view your results. It brings you right back here, in this case to page one. I know I was on page 12. So at that case, in that case, I wanna go to 13, hit enter, and it will advance me to page 13 and I can start selecting more records. So you get the idea of how that would work. 
perfect way to do that. You may have also noticed when you select download, you could also email those records to yourself. So know that you can do that as well, 250 at a time. So that is always available to you. Uh, and that's true on any module. We're looking at the US business database, but maybe I'm in the consumer lifestyles or the new movers, new homeowners. I can send that information to myself anyway. Let me do this. I'm gonna revise my search slightly. I did that really easily by just looking up restaurants, uh, across the area. I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I'm gonna remove the county and I'm gonna suggest, I'll add number of employees. And I remember that one to four was your big group. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that five to nine and that 10 to 19. I think those were the two smaller ones in between. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm also gonna say, show me all records with a website present. And then I'll open up my geography and I'm gonna use this map-based search tool. This can be a great tool as well. So you would want to deploy this last after you've made all of your designations. You can open that up. And Jillian, what's a zip code anywhere there in the city? Let's try um, 19125. One nine one two five. That's the Fishtown can, area. Okay, you can certainly use a zip code. You could put in a physical address here, maybe of your business, and you wanted to do a radius around your business. You could put in a zip code. You could put in the city state. I'll just use the zip code a little faster. Here I am in the zip centroid, and I'm going to adjust this map. I'm going to back out just a little bit here. I wanna get a little better perspective of the area here. Now I have these tools available for me to utilize. One of them is drawing a shape. So if you wanted to, maybe, maybe you're looking at this area and you're saying, you know what? I want to look at those restaurants that are in this area. And this is kind of like Echo Sketch, if you remember that game. I was never very good at that, but I'll do my best to try and stay in the lines here. So you can certainly frame this any way you want to. And then I'll just come right up here, double click to finish it. So it's a single click to start it, a single click to change directions, double click to end it. And then it will calculate how many businesses match my interest in that shape. And if that's all you need, you would simply come up here to the upper right hand corner and select done. And then as you can see, I'm ready to give you those 213 records. So that's one tool that you can use. Another tool that you can use is this true radius. So, and this radius, by the way, will go out 150 miles. So of course you would have to adjust your map to give it the room to go that far, right? It, it'll only go between these borders. So you need to make that kind of adjustment if you wanted such a, a large radius. And by the way, you could also draw that. Let's do this. I'll get a little bit closer. We'll go with that. I'll do a true radius. You know, maybe my business is located right here and I want to do a radius around my business. It's click and hold it and then drag it in whatever direction you want to go. And it will start calculating. Notice I'm at three miles, almost four there, a little over four. If that's all I needed and I wanted to stop right there, I just let go and then it will tally how many results are in there. Let me show you this though. I'm going to do a little larger one. I'm going to do it like this. And you also have this ability. You could, maybe there was an area, uh, we'll say here, you did not want to include this area in your search. You can retrace 
by drawing or using another radius. So there are 175 results out of this 2,569. I can double click in this new shape that I've drawn and say exclude OK, and then that 175 will be, be deducted from that 2569. So no, you could do something like that. I had a, uh, I worked with a score agency and a gentleman called me up and couldn't quite remember how to use this feature and, and wanted to have, uh, wanted to do, wanted to actually exclude two different areas in his drawing. And I walked him through how to do that. And, and then I asked him afterwards what we just got through, uh, uh, excluding from the area and he said that the customer he was working with was uh, pretty superstitious and there there were two cemeteries he wanted to be excluded and I said okay well then you have a happy customer so you can do that you can also use some predetermined boundaries it'll always start with the boundary of the state but I could get as, as close as a neighborhood, but it won't produce neighborhood records or those carrier routes from this level. I would need to drill in in order to be able to see that. See how it's now bolded and it's, if, so let's just overlay the zip codes in the area. Oh my gosh, that's the zip codes in the area. Holy cow, I'm gonna get a little closer so I can break some of these apart. So there was the primary zip code that I went in on, and you can click in any of these zip codes that you want uh, and get your totals based on whatever zip codes you chose. So if that's the case, if that's all you needed, you could simply say done and then view your results and you'll get those results for those three zip codes. I know lots of sales guys that love to use this and they'll actually, you know, maybe start north and work to the south or, or uh, from the west to the east. However you wanna do it, this is available. I also have the ability to create drive routes. I helped a gentleman in Wisconsin build a drive route the other day and what he was looking for were certain types of manufacturers in between two cities in Wisconsin. So he gave me the name of those two cities. We'd already put in the SIC code. So we had that designation already down. I'll just do my community here. So you can see how this would, would play out. I'll just do Omaha, Nebraska, and I'll say ending city of Lincoln, Nebraska. And then my buffered route, notice that only the maximum on that is 15 miles. What that gentleman wanted to do was he wanted to do three miles on either side of the interstate because he knew that those manufacturers would be probably that close to those on off ramps. So that was his reasoning for that for that three miles north, three miles south. In other words, a total of six miles. I'll do a buffered route of 0.3. So three blocks either side of the route that the system gives me. Then it's a matter of simply cl clicking on this buffered route. So you can do an actual street address. You can do the city, however you need to frame it. So in this case, it says that there are 65 results in my shape here between Omaha and Lincoln. The for that gentleman, he found 18 results that he was planning on cold calling. So he was going to go from city A to city B, and he was it was going to be a couple of day uh, trip for him to contact and call on all these businesses. So what he wanted to do was this. We said done. We went to view those results. And he said, Bill, is there a way that you can put those results back on the map so I can see where they're all at? We did that using the heat map. It always starts off with this view from 40,000 foot and you have to make the adjustments here. So you might have to adjust your, your map placement. And then you can start drilling in using your plus symbol. And you might need to make 
five or six, maybe seven clicks, depending on how granular you'd like to get. I'll show you what, how this is gonna play out here. Give it a little time to process what you've asked it to do. And eventually I'll have all of these guys in one view. So there's all those listings. It gives me that legend on the left-hand side with all of those listings. And then what he was going to do is he was actually going to have this map up on his computer in his vehicle. And then he was just going to go to each of these locations, put in their address and drive to each of those locations. So great way to use that map-based search tool, that driving route, and then be able to apply those results uh, to that. So that's another tool. And by the way, these tools, all of these tools that I'm talking about can be used for the most part in most of your modules. I know that the, the US healthcare doesn't offer uh, everything, the charts and the uh, heat map available in it. And neither does the jobs and internships, but all of the other modules do. I can always get back to my results. In fact, if I wanted to, I've got all of this information. You see these toggles that you have here. I could select this toggle and get all of this information in ascending order. So I could go boom, 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 boom. Just depends on what you need to be able to do. And I got all of that information off of my map-based search tool. So know that those tools are available for you in many ways. And, and of course, these were all the filters I used, number of employees, and that they had to have a web address. So know that you can utilize any of that. Any questions? Otherwise, I want to be able to show you some of the other modules that might be of interest, whether that's the new businesses. Some people want to know about those newer businesses in the community. Any questions? Hey, Bill, no questions right now. Um, I did change the settings so that if you would like to speak, you can unmute yourself and ask a question now. If not, what I'll do ahead is just go ahead and select reference solutions. That's my home key, brings you right back to the home page. And then I can go into any of these other modules. Let me, since we were just in the US business module, let me show you what the new businesses information will look like. So again, I could do a company name search. If I heard about a company that's opening, I could look at all businesses that are opening in the city state. Uh, and then it will also give me this ability to look at it as recently as last week or within the last year. Most people want to also be able to be able to use the, the additional filters. So let's just do your county again. And I'll say date range. So I can select that. It always defaults to the six months. Let's do, let's do the last three months. So let's see all filings. I'll select update count. So I have 480 filings over the course of the last three months that have come in through your county. Now I could choose business location type or a business filing type. So you, if you wanted to add some of those additional filters, if you didn't want a home-based business, but more of that of a, a corporate or a location-based business, you could select that. So what does that do to my number? Drops it down to 421. So the rest of those were in fact, those home-based businesses. Maybe I wanna find those businesses that are doing business as. What does that do to my number? So now I'm at 396. If that's what I now need to see, maybe I don't care about type of filing. I could certainly do a keyword search uh, or use the major industry group to drive in those specifics. But if not, here's my group. And then it's, you'll see, let's go with 
Oh, here, we'll go to the glam shop. I should go there soon. I've got the information. So I've got that address information. We're not certain of what industry they're in. We might assume that this is, in fact, a hair salon or a beauty salon or uh, something like that. But maybe the glam is referring to your, your automobile and you can get it glammed out. I don't know. I'm making that up. So we're going to verify this. We did get a phone number with them. It indicated on their filing type that it was going to be a new business doing business as the glam shop. Uh, and then it would be at a commercial location. They didn't include any additional information about that company. So our job becomes verifying that, getting a hold of that business, finding out for certain what this glam shop really is going to be doing, and then assigning the appropriate uh SIC code and NAICS code, and then filling in the rest of the information. Who's that owner or manager? How many employees are you going to have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's the extent of the information, barring the, uh, the location map through Google uh, that we have on that business. So that's, that's a great representation of everything that you would see. But no, you can use the heat map, you can use the charts. If you wanted to see for a sense, uh, to get a sense of the, the types of businesses that are being filed for, you could select that charts and then you get that breakdown. So uh, there are 25 of them that are restaurants, uh, 15 of them that are beauty salons, et cetera. And then, of course, you'll get that full report down here, all seven pages worth. So know that that is something that you could use. Any questions on the new business database or searching it? Otherwise, it, it is just like what I used uh, when I was in the US business database. Few, there's fewer filters in this, certainly but they work the same way. Okay, let me do this. I'll select the reference solutions, come back here to the home key. You know, the historical business information can be great information for folks. Maybe you're thinking about opening a type of business and you would like to look back over time to see the success or how that business, how that industry has grown over time. You could certainly do that. Maybe you're thinking about opening a business at a specific location and you would like to look at the neighborhood around that location to see if those other neighboring businesses have been there for a while and they're 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 happy in that area so they're not moving out or closing you could see if in fact that area is stable or not Lots of different ways that you can use that information. Let's do this. Let's let's not worry about. Uh, oh, we could we could select a few business types. We'll grab we'll grab some manufacturing. Uh, we'll grab construction, and I'll just go with those two. We don't want mining or agriculture, and I'll just do your county. And select that. Oh. And, fill in. and I have a total count. Uh, oops, I didn't grab my years. I'm going to grab some year time frames. So I'll start, let's start at 2005, and I'll go down to 11. And I'll grab 12 and I'll go down to 19. So I've got all those year ranges. So I'm going to update my count. And this is going to take into account all the records. So there'd be one record for a business that was open in 12, 13, 14. You get the idea. So there'll be a lot of records here. 57,000. Actually, I need to make that a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe I'll just take out manufacturing. Oops, I didn't want that. I wanted that. What does that do to my total? Well, better. That's better. I, I want less than 50,000 records. So I'm going to produce those results.
And I'm going to come over. So I've got these year ranges that are here. Notice those year ranges. So some of them are multiple years. Some are one year. Let's see if I can find one that's quite old. Not on that page. Well, let me show you this. I'll go right to charts. And we're going to break this down by our totals for each of those years. So uh, in 05, there were this many businesses, one or 2,104, as opposed to some in 06, 07, 08, 09, et cetera. Now notice what happens when I select SIC codes. It's going to now give me all of the SIC code, so it's going to drive in those tops. So general contractors was first, followed by construction companies, plumbing contractors, electrical contractors. Gives me that uh, complete information down here by SIC code for all of those. And then it gives me this terrific chart and it shows me each of them and their kind of uh, rise and fall and, and tapering off uh, over time. So look at that, how easy it is to get to all of that kind of information. So if you're, if you're looking at certain types of businesses, this can be a great tool to use to get that historical perspective. Know that that is available to you. I just think it's powerful and, and, and easy to, to obviously get to. I can switch it over to this industry comparison. And if I had multiple industries, now it's gonna break it down by those three uh, two-digit SIC codes. So it gives you that. But if I had more, obviously, if I had more industries, it would give me that uh, more condensed information. But you get that breakdown as well. So I can see that, that uh, special trade contractors over time have been pretty steady. Look at this, this bottom one with heavy construction. Not, I guess it wouldn't be too surprising that you don't see many leaps and bounds in, in terms of those. And then of course, general contractors. So can be some great information. Again, you could make that part of a PowerPoint presentation. If you didn't wanna use the pie chart, but you wanted to use one of these other options, you could use that. So know this historical information. I could be putting in a physical address and doing a radius around that address to see if those businesses in that area have been stable over time. Just depends on what you wanna be able to do with that. So that is available to you. The library has made a wealth of, because not all libraries have access to all of the modules. The library, uh, with, with uh, the Free Library in Philadelphia, they wanted to make certain that you have access to all of those modules. Let's switch gears and go into the consumer lifestyles. So this is all that verified information or information we're going to verify or have verified. The consumer lifestyle, we don't call verified consumers, right? But we're getting this information from magazine subscriptions that people are having sent to their home, surveys they've completed, uh, including online surveys, uh, of which there are many companies uh, that, that want to uh, get surveys from you. Uh, vehicle uh, uh, VIN number information. So when you have your new car serviced at the uh, uh, Chevy dealer or the Ford dealer, uh, getting that information memberships that people have. I was not in this consumer lifestyles module when I first moved back into Omaha. And unfortunately my dog became sick and we do track dog lovers under the lifestyle category. I ended up taking him to the vet, found out that the dog food I was feeding him, that that company had changed their formula and he was allergic to something with that new formula. So the vet said, you know, instead of spending a lot of money with me, uh, trying to get to the bottom line about what he's allergic to, do you have a Petco or a PetSmart near you? And you could just go get an all meat and all fish or an all chicken product and see if he won't be okay on that. So that's what I did. And I signed up for a PALS card through Petco. 
Uh, it's their membership program. I showed up in the database as a dog lover. So let's go to advanced search and we'll just do the county again. And I'll select that. And then we'll say, here's the consumer lifestyles indicator. So those are all of those indicators we're looking at. Here are those pet lovers. And as you can see, there's a plus symbol next to that. So if I wanted to see what was embedded under here, I can get to that information. And notice it does say up here at the top, there's a scoring system of zero through nine. When we produce the records based on whatever you selected here, we're only going to show you the records of people who score a six or higher. So if you were, maybe you were going to open a dog walking business, or maybe you were going to have a, a doggy boutique, uh, you could certainly identify those dog lovers in the, the, and you can do it against the county, the city, the zip code, however you want to do that. I would suggest doing it one per household because you don't want multiple records. You don't want multiple addresses for the same address. So if you switch it up to one per household, that will forego that and you'll get one address, one person, right? Uh, and then you could add other, maybe you know, because you already have this existing business, that a lot of your customers are probably in these income ranges. You could add these income ranges in and then be able to produce just a list of people who fall in these income ranges that are dog lovers. I have a total of 5,250 that match my criteria. Now, my doggy boutique isn't located all over the, the, the county, right? So uh, I can overlay that and then look at the heat map to give me that. I could also chart that information, but to give me an idea where I might want to focus some of my marketing initiatives. So if my business, like maybe my business is right down here, I would definitely want to know about this universe and I would definitely want to know probably about this universe. Chances are these folks are going to come to my location. So I could identify that by those zip codes if need be, or I could overlay uh, that those zip codes and get that information on the map that way as well. Again, I can print this off. If I want to just maybe, maybe this is gonna be my focus. I could get to just those records if that were the case and get a sense of where all of that's at so that I can then start my initiative, maybe doing some marketing to this 19128. So it just depends on how you want to frame that or build that search. So no, you can do that. I can always get back to my results. And this is what the records are gonna look like. So you'll always have that address information here. Everything that we've seen about uh, Melinda is that she's married. In some cases, it may say single here, single here, or it may say unknown. In other words, we just haven't uh, been able to identify one way or the other if they're married or single. Been in this home for about 23 years. There's that estimated household income and home value that I selected. And here's the reason that record came in, because of dogs. Now, let's look Notice it says uh, general cooking. Well, if I did another search and I was looking for this category, this record may not come up in my search because she doesn't score in that six to nine in this particular uh, category. So know that whenever you produce these results, they're active in whatever results you produced. I wanna show you a new tool that was just added probably two weeks ago. And I'm going to revise my search slightly. And in this case, I'll make sure it still stays on one. Now I'm just looking at dogs. Had a call from a lady late last week. And this, like I say, this tool was just rolled out. She was in uh, 
Phoenix, and she was interested in dog lovers but she was also interested in charitable donors because she was part of an AKC event that was gonna be taking place in uh, Phoenix. And she wanted to be able to reach out to charitable donors that are also dog lovers that might support their AKC event. So we went into more options and instead of showing any that match. So if I just looked at it from this standpoint, notice how my number goes up. Goes up to 36,000, right? So, but if I select, show me those uh, records that match all selected, in this case, the dog and the charitable, notice what I get now. So I've got 4,100 people that match my interest that are both charitable donors and dog lovers. Chances are somebody that's a charitable donor that also happens to love dogs might well uh, decide to be involved with that AKC uh, initiative that they had. So interesting way to be able to filter in or out that kind of information. So all of that is available to you. And I do wanna show you this as well. Let's, let's leave that as is. Uh, and what I'll do, actually, I'm gonna take out this just so I can get more records. What does that do? It gives me 10,000. Let's go with that. And I'm gonna show you this consumer snapshot section here. I'm gonna include some, some of these. Let's go with, Age, we'll go with marital status and we'll go with presence of children. I'll say some of these age ranges, we'll grab a few of these age ranges. We'll say single and children. I have a total of 305 records now that also include dog lovers and charitable donors. I can go to that information and look at now because I selected from that consumer snapshot, it no longer gives me the ability to see the records themselves. The closest I can get is to a zip code. So it gives me a chart, a matrix, or a table. Let's do the table. Let's, let's employ the, the, I took the income out, so I'll throw that in this time. I'll do uh, uh, presence of children and age against this zip code. I'll show my summary and then it gives me that breakdown. So it gives me those estimated home income values. And notice this is quite lengthy. It gives me the estimated age ranges that they have children present. There are those zip codes and there are the number of records for those zip codes. So that's as close as we allow you to get whenever you make any kind of selection using this consumer snapshot area. So know that that is always gonna suppress that. We just don't wanna be that company that shows up on 60 Minutes on Sunday night with somebody saying, yeah, I got that information at my library. Uh, so we restrict all of this information. Any questions on this consumer data? I, 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 I am amazed at how quickly time just goes scooting by here. Any questions on the consumer? Otherwise, I wanna show you one more module and we'll open it up for any other final questions that folks might have and then conclude. No questions in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna to go to reference solutions again. If you in fact have a business and would like to learn about new people to your community, this is a great tool to be able to use. So I'll search and I'm gonna go right to advanced search. Not that I couldn't use some of these filters, but most of the time people are in advanced search. We'll do the county again. And Grab that. We'll say, show me people that have moved from a, a particular distance and a time frame. So let's let's imagine my magic number is 
let's say 80 miles. Oops, I better put it in there. 80 miles. I don't want to see anybody that's moved from within 80 miles. And I'll say 2,200 miles. Could be as recent as last week or within the last year. Let's look at the last three months. How many people have moved into uh, Philadelphia County from at least 80 miles away up to 2,200 miles away in the last three months? 2, 000, almost 3,000 people have moved in in the last three months. So smack dab in the middle of this pandemic into Philadelphia County. So I could view those results or I could even add other filters. Maybe, maybe I own a service industry type of business. Maybe I, maybe I have a, a lawn care service and I would like to know about those confirmed homeowners out of this group. I could make that a driver and update my count and I get to those 59 that are confirmed. What do I have for probable? I wouldn't maybe mind marketing to them as well. So I could market to that group to let them know about my services and perhaps win some business that way. Their records are gonna look just like this. And again, we have that same information about if you're gonna be using this information for any kind of solic solicitation, you need to have the list run up against the do not call registry. And of course, there are not going to be many phone numbers probably listed at all in this new, new mover information. But this is what their record's going to look like. It's going to give you their name, address information here. Uh, this person moved from 122 miles away and is living in a condominium. Then we give you some of that neighborhood information along with those uh, average uh, age ranges. So great information to be able to have or or to perhaps even market to these folks maybe you're going to do a snail mail notice you could actually come in here and you've got all kinds of mortgage details that you could utilize certainly housing type if you wanted to use maybe i have a business maybe i have uh and i don't care about type of home ownership I can get rid of that. And now I'm back to that 3,500. But maybe what I want to be able to do is look at estimated ages. Maybe I have a gym, uh, a, a fitness facility, and I want to look at some of these age ranges because I've had some really good success with my marketing with these age ranges. I could see what that ref would be reflective of. Of course, I could be putting in a street address and doing a radius around that or use my map-based search tool. It just depends on what I want to do. But once I've seen those or once I've selected those records, of course, I can put all of that on the heat map and get a sense of where those folks are located for my marketing initi initiatives. So always you have these various uh, tools that would be uh, you, uh, universally usable across all of the modules. Any questions? We're just about there. No questions in the chat, Bill. Okay. Did you want to, Jillian, did you want to uh, share any insights with folks? I think you really covered a ton of information here. It's really great. Um, keep in mind that you can access this resource from home with your library card number and PIN. Um, you can always access it on the app as well. And if you have any questions um, after Bill leaves today, you can feel free to request an appointment with a business librarian at freelibrary.org business. And we'll walk you through your questions. Perfect. And, and know that you can always go under the Learning Center uh, to reach our, to identify or contact us and be able to reach out to us as well. We'd love to help you. Thanks so much, Bill. That was really great. Thank um, you. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.